Nice job, dickhead. Uh. His name is Exit Duck when well, he really wants to review movies and games. So why don't you all come along so that you may hear his voice with a high pitch? He's got a hat that is fucking cool. And also, fucking no pink. So sit back and get associated with Exit Show. It's up and awesome, cool, sweet, and bitchy. It's X rated. <sighs> Okay, so, as you've probably guessed by now, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. I'm also a huge fan of video games, so when the new Spider-Man game comes out, I'm all over that like fucking on X. And today, I want to talk about one of my most favourite Spider-Man games, if not, my most favourite game of all time, and that is Spider-Man Web of Shadows. Developed by Treyarch and published by Activision, this game was given very average to mediocre ratings by most reviewers. Despite this, I think this game really helps capture a feel to what being Spider-Man is like. But before I go on about that, let me give you a quick rundown for those who haven't played it yet. So our story begins with Spider-Man being all moody. Yeah, like that isn't some kind of first for Spider-Man. The world crumbles around him, throwing you headlong into a battle craze tutorial with nothing but Parker's whininess for company. Now where is Cage in his search party? Where is MJ? Where's Cage in his search party? A million volunteers! Pretty redhead, arm and aghast! You are no help! MJ! 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 I'm ah, so worried! Damn it. After a mysterious symbiotic figure attacks the wall crawler, we're taken back a few days prior to see the main villain of the game, Venom. Parker. It's also here we discover one of the main mechanics of the game. And in my opinion, the thing that really made this game special? The ability to change between the symbiote suit and the red suit. When I first discovered you could have both suits and switch freely between the two, I'm pretty sure I shit my pants. You best play it cool, man. The other interesting thing this mechanic offered the game was that now you could decide whether to be a good Spider-Man or an evil bastard Spider-Man. Now, decision making isn't as complex as Mass Effect. Okay. Unless you're talking about the last decision in Mass Effect 3. <laughs> But basically, after every boss battle, you get given the choice to be good or bad. That, added with the decisions you make during free roam, whether it be saving a guy from falling off a roof or throwing a car while someone's inside it, at the end of the game it all adds up, and all your previous actions in the game pretty much determine the outcome of the whole story. Hey, did you hear that Mass Effect 3? All decisions made previously determine how the game ends. Not some bullshit last decision that basically wipes your ass with all three games. I mean, how the f- Suffice to say, your actions have consequences. Okay. Yeah! Ow. Let's talk about the combat. Ow. Okay, so for a sandbox beat em up game, I really think the combat system is very good. What with there being two suits, you get two different styles of combat, with the red suit being all acrobatic and fast, and the black suit being all about ruthlessness and power. Now you can either focus on one suit and unlock all its moves, or what I started doing on my fourth play of the game was unlock all the moves and basically switch between suits during mid combo. I can't tell you how satisfying it is beating someone down and then switching suits only to smack them down even harder. The story is stable enough with Venom as your main villain of the game, as well as many of Spider-Man's other trademark baddies you have to contend with like Vulture and Electro. However, a nice spin that gets added with Venom slowly taking over New York is the introducing of classic Marvel characters getting a symbiotic makeover. And I don't just mean the villains, even Wolverine gets taken over, and looks pretty badass I must say. The voice acting in this game is fair, with Mike Vaughn as Spider-Man however, his performance wasn't what I would call memorable, but Steve Bloom Wolverine is always a treat. Then I can chop him up by the dozen. Overall, I love this game. I love that they made a Spider-Man game that I enjoy so much that 9 times out of 10 I pick this game up to play it, I don't even play the main story. I just put on a kick-ass soundtrack and swing through New York City, fighting bad guys for the purpose of enjoying the moment. I love this game, because to me it offers great replay value and is a game I can get lost in for hours. That's the mark of a great game, something that submerges you so naturally into its story that you just have to play it again and again. That's why I give this game an X rating of OPIC. So that was my first review, and you know, I think they did a pretty good job. 
yeah, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but, you know, for a first time try, I think I'm ready to take on other stuff. I, I think I can take whatever the internet can throw at me. Oh, whoa. Ah, uh, fuck with that. After successfully reviewing one of his favorite games, a new opponent has arrived to be rated. And it happens to be the worst film of all time. Will X survive this encounter of pure, unadulterated shit? Or will this movie claim another victim along with a Dragon Ball franchise? Find out next time on X-Rated!